So the iPhone 15 has been out for about three months now, which is actually pretty crazy. So I wanted to kind of give a little bit of a breakdown on exactly how this device has been holding up for the past few months and to kind of show you all that, hey, this phone is still great. It's aging very, very well, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go ahead and buy this particular phone in this day and age. And we'll talk about that throughout this video. Now, first of all, I would 100% recommend buying the iPhone 15. I think it's a tremendous phone. I think it's a great phone. And I do think it's one of those devices that, you know, if you plan on buying one, this is the, one of the devices I'd recommend buying. I mean, it's beautiful. It just looks like a great phone. And I've always felt like this phone in and of itself, it's just such a good device to pick up. Now on the exterior, nothing has changed. It's exactly as it was before, as most of you probably know, this is one of those devices that I would look at and it still looks like a beautiful phone. You know, the 15 has still has a 6.1 inch display. Nothing has really changed on the exterior, which is good. Nothing is going to change on the exterior of these devices. The only thing that you could probably say, the USB Type-C port on the bottom is also very, very important for these types of iPhones, just because, you know, it was one of the groundbreaking features within this particular phone. You're still getting that frosted glass back, which is amazing. Once again, I've stated this for so many months now, but having that frosted glass back on this base model iPhone is amazing, and it's just such a cool feature. That dual camera is also held up very, very well. You have to remember that this particular iPhone is basically the iPhone that's going to be competing against the Galaxy S23, the Google Pixel of this time. And really, I would say the S23 is still going to be top tier, but that iPhone 15 at that $800 price tag is still pretty decent. And now that it's been out for a couple of months now, the best feature, and I would say the biggest asset for a phone like this, is the fact that you can basically buy it for a significantly cheaper value in the used market than it is or that it was available brand new. So you have to remember with the iPhone 15, if you want to go and buy this thing in the used market, it has gotten maybe like a $50 to $100 cheaper depending on the condition. But this is the best thing. You can vary that condition. If you want to get one that's a little bit more scratched up, which is very hard to find, you will basically be able to buy it and pay, basically save maybe like up to $100 in the used market, which again, I think is a very cool thing to have. Being able to buy these iPhones not only allows you to, you know, if you buy them in the used market, it allows you to save money sometimes and you can also get them at a faster time rather than having to wait for them to be back in stock inside of the Apple store. So this is one of the biggest assets of buying a used iPhone and I'm so happy that we have this type of capability here for these types of products. Now going on beyond that, the only other thing I can think of of you know this iPhone and the way it's been aging, I would say is with iOS 17.1 and now that we have iOS 17.2. Now that we have this latest version of software, Apple has been extending and basically improving iOS so much now that I would say it's probably in one of the best spots it's ever been. iOS 17 has gotten so much more stable and now Apple is filling in their promises of things like bringing in that journal application, which was something that was so important for them to bring in the first place. And now that they're actually going through and bringing these things back up again, I think it's super important. So that in and of itself is another really cool thing. 17.3 beta one just came out today too. So that's another pretty big asset. So I will tell you from my experience from a software standpoint alone, this phone has gotten better since the first day it came out and that's exactly what you'd want from an iPhone. Now beyond that, I would say the only other thing I can think of that this iPhone basically you know, has changed in the last couple of months beyond the just the hardware fixes Apple brought in here via the software is probably the rumors of the iPhone 16, the iPhone SE 4, and the new things that may be happening with iOS 18. So we all know next year the new iPhones are going to be coming out. There are some rumors saying that all the iPhones next year will be basically be having that action button. And I do think that's true because this year, you know, the previous year, the pro models had the dynamic island. Now all iPhones have the dynamic island. I'm pretty sure with the iPhone 16, you're going to be getting all the action buttons on all the iPhones, which I think is very cool and a super, super important thing to have. So I look at this particular phone. I look at the iPhone 15 and the past three months, this iPhone has held up very, very decently. Not perfectly, but it's held up good enough for a majority of things I've thrown at it. And I think that's a very cool thing to have on this type of product. It's not perfect, and I know that, but it's very good, it gets the job done, and I still think it's 100% worth buying for sure. So that pretty much covers it up here. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, not me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly, that'd be thing. I also love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.